Right, hello guys, and welcome to today's video. In today's video, we finally get to talk about it, how skill-based matchmaking really works in Call of Duty, and specifically Modern Warfare 3 and multiplayer, because yes, they are doing a bit of a separate one on this. So they have today, that is Call of Duty Activision itself, put out a blog post explaining in true massive detail, this is why this video is going to be a bit long today, but in massive detail about how skill-based matchmaking really works in Modern Warfare 3 multiplayer and in Call of Duty multiplayer in general. Uh, they are going to talk about rank play in Warzone at a later date, so if you are one of those people who plays rank play in Warzone and want to know the details how that works, they haven't put that out yet, but they said they will do that in a future blog post. So stay tuned for that, I will of course cover that on the channel. But let's get into it. Let's talk about Modern Warfare 3 skill-based matchmaking. And they said that Call of Duty does have skill-based matchmaking, of course, uh, the, the community refers to it as skill-based matchmaking. However, Call of Duty does consider skill, or more specifically player performance as a component, as do most in the interest industry. So they're saying obviously other, other companies have their own skill-based matchmaking. But it says skill is not the dominant variable, and we consider and prioritize several factors to create lobbies. And they have this image here that shows eight different components that go into talking about, you know, how matchmaking works in Call of Duty. So the first one they start off with is connection. As the community will attest, ping is king. Connection is the most critical and heavily weighted factor in the matchmaking process. So they're saying that number one is connection. How true that is, depending, you know, on like shadow ban lobbies and getting shadow banned and stuff like that is a bit of an iffy one, but they say connection is the number one B and, and you know, factor as to what happens to your matchmaking. Two, time to match. The factor is the second most critical to the matchmaking process. We all want to spend time playing the game rather than waiting for matches to start. So they try to get you in a game as quick as possible. Of course, that's the Call of Duty way, getting into games quickly. I can't say I personally get into games that quickly compared to Call of Duty in the past, but I do... I don't know, it's a bit of an iffy one there, but the following factors are also critical to the matchmaking pro uh, process. They say playlist diversity, the number of playlists available for players to choose from. So, of course, that's why we get rotating playlists every week or so. I'm guessing that's why they do that now. They feel that, you know, it makes makes it more likely for players to match with each other and, you know, quickens uh, matchmaking times, I guess. Uh, recent map slash modes, considering maps you have recently played on, as well as your mode preferences, edible and quick play settings. So, of course, in the quick play, you know, you can pick TDM, free for etc. Of course, that's going to have a factor in what you play. Otherwise, you know, it wouldn't make any sense. But it considers maps you've played. Now, that I'm quite interested in. What does that mean? Does that mean if you play Shipment over and over again, well, obviously, without it being the Shipment 24-7 playlist, does that mean you get into a map that isn't Shipment? Or do they try and put you on a map that you like more? I'll see. I'll see if that's it, you know that's put down here further into the uh, blog. Skill slash performance. They got it here. This is used to give our players a global community with a wide skill range the opportunity to have it, and the opportunity to have an impact in every match. So it says there the opportunity to have an impact in every match. They're trying to say that skill based matchmaking is there and skill performance is taken to try and get you to match players of the same skill and to give you a fighting chance, basically. Which I do understand. I do get that. It's just sometimes we all do believe it's a little bit cranked to the max, right? Uh, next up, input device. So it does take into effect to your controller or mouse and keyboard, which of course makes sense if you're one of those people who plays on controller. Typically, you're playing against controller players. That's what I've noticed. I've noticed also I've played a lot of console players. So that seems to have obviously an impact. I don't really face PC players that often, but they are in my lobbies here and there. Uh, the platform again says there the device console that you're playing on. So yeah, like I just said. And then voice chat, enabled or disabled is a very interesting one. I never knew this had an impact, but it is the bottom factor. Your voice chat being enabled or disabled. I wonder if people are going to run with that one and see if they can uh, do something interesting with that. Because I don't know, that's an interesting one. Could that massively have an impact? But it does have it here as bottom, so I can't imagine that have a massive impact. But that's an interesting one, I never knew that. So voice chat enabled or disabled has an impact on your matchmaking. Very interesting. Uh, every time a player begins matchmaking multiplayer, for example, the process needs to work through all these factors to find other players and to quickly assemble a lobby that is stable and competitive. These factors have resulted in the process we believe presides the best player experience and creates a stronger community for Call of Duty worldwide. So now let's get more technical. They, they speak a bit more in depth about these factors. By the way, let me know down below. Do you do you care about skill based matchmaking in Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3? Do you think it actually has a massive impact or do you think people are a bit over the top with this and this has kind of got all of hand? Let me know down below what you think. But yeah, so let's get into it. Whether you're playing for fun with friends or looking to climb the leaderboards, connection is the most important part of the Call of Duty experience. Call of Duty's matchmaking process evaluates a metric we call Delta Ping, which is the difference in round trip round trip time of the data between your best data center, always the one closest to you, and the data center onto which your lobby has been placed. Uh, to reiterate, we always try to maximize the times we place players in data centers that are closest to them. Call of Duty uses a client server model to host matches where the time is taken to share information between the player and the data center 
and has an impact on your overall feel of the match. The Call of Duty netcode, which we've discussed in the past, works to reduce the effect of latency, but cannot be com completely eliminated. Of course it can't. But uh, the matchmaking process seeks to reduce the overall amount of latency by prioritizing stable connections or low ping with a shortened wait time in mind. So, yeah, that's kind of, you know, that makes sense. That was obviously how it should work in essence. Of course, that's going to factor in, you know, the other things we're about to talk about in a second. But measuring time to match for matchmaking. Any form of matchmaking takes time. If the ta wait time in a lobby is excessively long, players typically recycle the process by cancelling out a matchmaking search and restarting or even quitting. They've put here that this does not quicken the matchmaking process and in fact can even be detrimental. So if you are one of those people who get stuck in a very long loop of waiting, because I've had it too, where you're, you know, at certain times, maybe I'm playing at three and four in the morning. I do get this quite a bit where you're playing, you're trying to search for a game and it takes a while. You do, everyone does it, right? It's a force of habit. You quit the, you quit the matchmaking and you start again. They've actually put here that this seems to actually possibly be detrimental and take a longer time because of it. I'm not so sure on this. I'm not so sure how true this actually is because I definitely have like, been one of those people so you know this is kind of me going off a visual thing and what i've seen and done i've done that i've cancelled matchmaking and then sometimes it just puts me straight into a game i don't know if you guys have had that let me know down below whether you have had the same sort of experience but me personally i have definitely cancelled the matchmaking searched again and then instantly again i don't know where it's just a glitch or something you know that can happen the matchmaking just messes up or something i don't know but that's that's an interesting one that they put that there so it says for example in the popular model for free playlist uh rushman uh, Rustman, sorry, which is Rust and Shipment. Players often leave lobbies and or match up matches early on, hoping to requeue into Shipment instead. This creates a vacant spot on a team during the early stage of the match, as the matchmaking process may prioritize backfilling that spot. This could result in players perceiving that Rust is disproportionately selected over Shipment. So trying to cherry pick maps may have an unexpected result. So what they're trying to say, I think this is basically saying that they're not trying to cherry pick maps the way that people do isn't actually going to help you in any way, shape or form. Again, quite an interesting one. Very interesting. Uh, next up, measuring skill for matchmaking. While skill is one of the several factors in Call of Duty match matchmaking, we know the community wants more information about how it fits in the process. Skill is determined based on a player's overall performance, so kills, deaths, wins, losses, and more, including mode selection and recent matches as an overall metric across all multiplayer experiences. This is a fluid measurement that co that's consistently updating and reacting to your gameplay. Skill is not only a factor in matchmaking, players against appropriate enemies but also when finding teammates i'm not sure about that okay i'm going to be the one to say it team balancing can be very very skewed in this game i've had it a lot of times where you might even see it in some of these gameplays but maybe not the worst one specifically because it's ground war but when i do 66 gameplays you guys will see i have very disproportionate teams like the other team will have about you know a 0 0.8 to 1.2 kd and a lot of my teammates will have 0.5 to 0.6 so i'm a bit iffy on this one uh, but Call of Duty has historically considered player performance, among other factors, as part of matchmaking process. They said this has happened since COD 4, which, yes, that is true. Skill-based matchmaking is known to have been since in COD 4. I knew this. It just wasn't as, obviously, strict as it is today. And, you know, it's quite vastly different from where, where, how it was back then. Uh, we use player performance to ensure that the disparity between the most skilled player in the lobby and the least skilled player in the lobby isn't so vast that players feel their matches are a waste of time. Our data on player outcomes clearly indicates that the inclusion of skill in Call of Duty's matchmaking multiplayer process increases the variety of outcome experiences by players of all skill levels. In other words, all players, regardless of skill level, are more likely to experience wins and losses more proportionally. So this has kind of been made to balance it all for everyone, right? Which is which is obviously the idea of skill-based matchmaking. So they're saying this does in fact work by stuff of their data. This definitely actually has a good impact on the game. I can't argue that if that's what they're saying and they feel that is the way it is, then, you know, you can't argue it, right? If they feel that more players are getting more wins and getting more proportionate lobbies based off of that, and I guess sticking around and stuff, then you have to, you just have to leave it be, you know? They, that's what the data is saying to them and they're going to continue to do it, I guess. So, yeah. Uh, in addition to today's blog, our technology team is developing, oh, they're developing a ping and matchmaking white paper for those inclined to get into the more, what is this saying? So... Oh, so there's, there's going to be a addition about paying and matchmaking for on white, white paper for those inclined to get into the more granular information about Call of Duty matchmaking. So, okay, so we're going to publicize something in the future that kind of specifically goes into more details. It's going to be probably be the absolute facts about how it works, how it's coded in. We'll have to see. We'll have to see what that says. Uh, does the pro Call of Duty matchmaking process impact any in-game elements such as hit register? Oh, here we go. So we're going to talk about the conspiracy theories okay the big conspiracy theories a lot of these i don't agree with well, if anything i'm going to be honest i don't agree with any of them 
But here we go. So, does Call of Duty... Uh, where is it? Hold on. Does Call of Duty player engagement time played have a factor in game matchmaking? We do not consider how often or how much you play when to turn matchmaking. So your play time means nothing. It does not matter if you played for two minutes or 10 hours or 50 days. They say it does not impact your matchmaking. Does the Call of Duty matchmaking process impact any in-game elements such as hit registration, player visibility, aim assist, damage, etc.? Now, this is a big one because a lot of people have had conspiracy theories that they do less damage and their bullets get nerfed and their hit registration is awful, their aim assist goes to, you know, trash, basically. But they've put no. They have answered this fully out there. They've not ignored it. And I'm quite surprised because I thought they'd just ignored it. But nope, they have went out and said, no, our matchmaking process does not impact any in play gameplay elements whatsoever so no hit registration none of that does not affect it next up does spending money on call of duty content so battle pass bundles black cell change how players are matched money spent does not in any way shape or form factor into matchmaking again this is on the blog post you can read this for yourself i did speak about this in the video previously because i wasn't sure if it's a thing but they have confirmed that this is not a thing so you have to take it again they can't lie about this like this would be a lawsuit if they were to lie about something like this people would you know if someone could find a way to work out if it is true or active or not that would be a lawsuit so there they've put it out there it does not in any way affect your matchmaking does call of duty now this is the one that started this year for a lot of random people i watched the videos on this okay it's, it's going to talk about how does call of duty use real you know ai bots in matchmaking I found this wild. I watched the videos saying they had evidence. I thought this was complete blasphemy, to be honest, like uh, absolutely non-factual. The evidence was horrible. This was not a thing. And guess what? They confirmed Call of Duty multiplayer does not use bots as part of the general matchmaking process. If this changes in the future, we will inform the community. This is interesting. They haven't ruled out the possibility of that being a thing in the future. Are they working on this? That's a very interesting one. So they didn't just say no to it. They said no. But they kind of said here that, hey, this is something that might happen down the line. Interesting to see on that. Next up, do partners or content creators get special consideration in matchmaking? They've put no. We do not change the matchmaking process based on who owns the account. In specific cases, such as for events like Call of Duty Next, we may be required to customize how lobbies are formed. However, these events usually take place in private matches and do not impact general matchmaking. People probably have said this based off of the fact that they've watched their favorite YouTuber. You know, I don't want to name names, but we, we've all watched them, right? Getting to pretty easy lobbies. They they kind of mess around with the matchmaking, all right? We're talking about VPNs and stuff. I think people thought they were prioritized and that. No, they definitely go about their own way of getting around the matchmaking, whether it be, you know, queuing with a bot, you know, the, the, what's the thing called double stacking, where they go in with a bot account, join that bot account, and then play in a bot lobby. So those people don't get priority, by the way. They are just cheating the system, okay? So I would like to see if they, you know, because they clearly they know then that people are, you know, curious on this and why their favorite YouTuber is getting easy lobbies. So that would be interesting. I want to see if they do anything about those people doing that. It will be interesting. Have you ever considered an opt-in, opt-out system for the matchmaking algorithm? Our data suggests that splitting the player base with an opt-in, opt-out matchmaking system will have negative consequences on the overall player pool. That means potentially longer wait times based on the type of matchmaking selected, such as uh, playlist, map, mode, history, platform, and more, and matches with poor connections. So they have not considered this, basically. Have you ever tested removing skill as a consideration for matchmaking? The big one here, right? We have run tests over the years to determine if removing skill as a consideration for matchmaking makes sense. We'll continue to launch these tests periodically to date. Uh, to date, the data remains consistent with what we need to debuff. Players tend to quit matches or stop playing if they're getting blown out, resulting in a negative overall experience for all players in the lobby and the general player population. We purposely do not disclose when these tests occur because it may impact feedback or the data we see during these tests. And then finally, just to get out of the way, have you considered removing skill from matchmaking in specific general multiplayer game modes? We have considered this in the past and we'll continue to examine if this idea makes sense as part of an experimental playlist or in specific modes. We have nothing to announce on that from today. That is it. That is the post. Uh, let me know your thoughts and feelings down below. What do you think about this post? I will leave a link to this in the description, of course. But this is how the matchmaking works. This is how skill-based matchmaking works in Call of Duty. But I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, leave a comment, leave a like, subscribe, subscribe and notifications on. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Goodbye.